Acute coronary syndromes is the major source of uh, mortality in, in patients with cardiovascular disease. And um, acute coronary syndromes, they uh, um, include a large range of patients, um, from patients with SS segment elevation acute myocardial infarction to those with non-SS segment elevation acute myocardial infarction or those with unstable angina. Um, networks have uh, contributed a lot in uh, providing patients with SS segment elevation myocardial infarctions with a prompt reperfusion therapy, uh, mostly with a primary PCI because uh, primary PCI is shown definitively that it's the best uh, reperfusion therapy in patients with STEMI. Patients with non-ST segment uh, elevation acute coronary syndromes um, are uh, much larger and complex uh, a diagnostic uh, a range, and uh, so you need to, to do several tests in order to uh, establish the final diagnosis in, the, in these patients. However, one thing is clear in these patients, they uh, need, most of them, they need an invasive strategy. The question is how uh, quickly we should offer this strategy to these patients with uh, non st segment elevation acute myocardial infarctions. So there, there is some confusion in, uh, in uh, recommending the strategy and recommending networks here. Uh, for me as an interventional cardiologist and for all those who, who have uh, dealt with patients with non ss segment acute coronary syndromes, the simplest network to be established for these patients is just send the patients to a PCI center. So that because uh, exactly for these patients in whom the diagnosis is so complex, you cannot, uh, you cannot rely on, on uh, complex protocols and uh, that uh, involve also uh, people or medical staff that is not um, expert in uh, uh, treating patients with acute coronary syndromes. On the other side, there are large, well, there are areas in which uh, you cannot uh, send very quickly the patient to the to the PCI center, and for exactly for these areas, which in Europe are not uh, the dominant areas, you may you may find these areas in other countries, for example, Canada or United States or in Russia. But uh, for Western Europe, for example, it is, um, it is very easy to find an uh, international centre uh, not very far enough from the point in which uh, the patient has the first medical contact. However, if there is no PCI centre uh, in the close uh, to the uh, um, site in which the patient is presenting, then it is for sure uh, uh, important to apply the risk scores for these patients in order to um, identify those patients that might benefit from a very uh, fast uh, interventional strategy. And for this, we have several uh, scores based on the clinical characteristics, based on, uh, on the um, elevation of uh, biomarkers, which are um, also applicable to small uh, centers, to small hospitals without uh, cath lab. And um, for these uh, centers, um, if they diagnose a very high risk of patients, they should send, they should find a way to send the patient in a very short time, two hours. If the patient is uh, a high risk patients, then they have a little bit more time to find out which is the most, the closest intervention center to send the patients. But in general, I would, I would highlight uh, more and more that uh, if you have the possibility, send the patient with acute coronary syndrome to a PCI center in order to get the appropriate treatment.